If you grew up playing video games, you probably have heard something along the lines of this. Video games will damage your eyes, rot your brain, and have no positive benefits. Well, as we know, this isn't the case. And what we're going to discuss today are some of the positive benefits we actually can see in our health from playing video games. So let's do that right now. Hey everyone, welcome to Science-Based Fitness where I create weekly content helping people on their fitness journeys. If that's something you're interested in, click the subscribe button. Other than that, let's get right into the video. We're gonna break today's video down into three separate parts. Part number one is gonna be based all upon the eyes. How does gaming affect your eyes? Is there benefits? Is there drawbacks? Uh, what do we need to know going forward? We're gonna break that all down. In part two, we're gonna discuss how gaming affects your brain. Is it actually gonna rot your brain? Is that a misleading statement? We'll discuss some of the science behind that as well. And then in part three, we're gonna talk about additional benefits that we've seen in video gaming. So if you are into fitness, maybe we can find some ways to increase our hand-eye coordination, uh, maybe our dexterity by playing video games, but we'll have to see if that's true when we get to that. So first, we're gonna break down some negative effects. Excessive gaming can lead to what is called digital eye strain or computer vision syndrome. This can cause headaches, eye strain, or upper shoulder tightness and fatigue. Although it's recommended by the AOA to look away from your screen every 20 minutes and focus on something in the distance for 20 seconds, that helps combat this problem. Computer vision syndrome is temporary and will go away after resting your eyes. Now let's discuss some of the positive benefits. For those who suffer from what is commonly known as a lazy eye, a study was performed on participants playing 40 hours of first-person shooters a week, and they saw improvements across the board. In a second study that was looking at contrast sensitivity tests, which is the ability to measure and distinguish between light versus dark, they were able to show that individuals that played action-based games actually had a better ability to distinguish between light versus dark. This means that presumably anybody who plays action-based games can potentially benefit. And for the claim that sitting too close to your TV will damage your eyes, there seems to be no evidence to support this. A lot of the eye care associations seem to post right on their websites that this is a common myth. So we're going to breeze right through that. But now we get to a little bit more confusing area. We're going to talk about blue light and how it can damage your eyes. Now everyone's probably seen glasses like this. These are the blue light blocking glasses that are supposed to protect your eyes from the blue light from your screen. From the research I looked into, the blue light can be harmful to your eyes, but it's much more complicated than that. So let's turn to the professionals and look at an article from the Harvard School of Medicine written by Dr. David Ramsey. In this article, he explains how lights typically emit broad spectrums of color and not just one. LEDs typically emit a large amount of blue light when compared to the traditional lights. LEDs are used to backlight our phones, computers, TVs, all sorts of devices. But he explains when it comes down to LEDs that illuminate the retail stores, they're twice as bright as the max brightness on your iPhone. And when it comes to the sun, which is the main source of blue light, that's 10 times brighter than our cell phones. And he stated the following, compared to the risk of aging, smoking, cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, and being overweight, exposure to typical levels of blue light from consumer electronics is negligible in terms of increasing risk of macular degeneration or blindness. Furthermore, the current evidence does not support the use of blue light blocking lenses to protect the health of your retina, and advertisers have been fined for misleading claims about these lenses. Although I want to throw a caveat into this, he did mention, and also from some of the studies I did look at myself, they mention that blue light still does affect our circadian rhythm, which is essentially our sleep cycle, so just be aware of that before going to bed. Well, I think we know this isn't true, and we do see a lot of benefits for people that do game when it comes to our cognition and our brain. One of those benefits is increasing neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the ability of the neural network in the brain to change through growth and reorganization. In a study, a group played Super Mario Brothers for a minimum of 30 hours a day for two straight months. They said video game training augments gray matter in the brain areas crucial for spatial navigation, strategic planning, working memory, and motor performance, going along with evidence for behavioral changes for navigation strategy. This study even went as far as saying that video game training could therefore be used to counteract known risk factors for mental disease such as small hippocampus 
and prefrontal cortex volume in, for example, post-traumatic stress syndrome, schizophrenia, and neurodegenerative diseases. This was simply their hypothesis on a form of application of video game training. So we can improve our planning, we can improve our working memory, we can improve our navigation and motor performance. What other positive effects can we see from video gaming? Well, how about higher grades for starters? When looking at over 3,000 children ages 6 to 11, a study was able to find higher gameplay was linked to 1.75 times the chance of higher intellectual functioning and a 1.88 times the chance of a higher overall school competency. What about hand-eye coordination? According to a study by the University of Toronto, we can see increases in hand-eye coordination along with positive impacts on our cognition. This can obviously affect our athletic abilities when we increase our hand-eye coordination and our ability to think under pressure. Stress reduction. For some people, stress reduction can be simply gaming. In studies with stressed individuals, playing video games have reduced negative emotions such as frustration, and participants have reported playing games for stress relief purposes. And the final benefit I want to throw on this list is sense of community. With an almost limitless number of games, I'm sure there's a gaming community that you'll feel right at home in. For those who struggle making friends or simply talking to other people, this is a way to actually develop relationship skills. Although the gaming community has its reputation for being toxic sometimes, most people do have great stories about the people they meet and interact with, and generally there's a positive vibe on most gaming communities. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Share this with your friends, show them some of the benefits of playing games. My channel is all about fitness and health videos, and I recently made a video on meditation. We talked about all the mental benefits you can actually see from it. In gaming, you have a lot of cognition and mental benefits that are seen, so I thought this would be a great video to also put in my repertoire of videos. Hopefully these videos can help you in your day-to-day -day life and make you a better version of you. We'll see you guys in the next video. Click like and subscribe. We'll see you around.